Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. With the leveling changes announced for Shadowlands and Pre-Patch almost being upon us, there was an announcement of so-called Time Walking Campaigns from Blizzard. It basically means that if you are an experienced player, you would be able to choose a leveling path for your new alts to level in Shadowlands and pre-patched for Shadowlands. So in this video I would like to offer you my opinion on one of those paths, potential paths of these time walking campaigns, and I'd like to advocate for, surprise surprise, Warlords of Draenor. Yes, please hear me out. Hi my friends, uh, did I say hi already? Okay, twice is better than none, right? So um, we are talking about the leveling. So leveling is very dear to my heart, I'm an altoholic. So why Warlords of Draenor? I was one of those people who actually was very vocal and was very much against the Blizzard's position of communicating with us very, very poorly at the end of Warlords of Draenor. They have stretched the tail end of the expansion horrendously. And that was what left this long, forgive me, smudge kind of on our perception of Warlords of Draenor as an expansion. Of course, I'm very well aware as a veteran of the game, I'm very well aware that during Warlords of Draenor, we also were kind of stuck in our garrisons quite a lot. And that's why we didn't see the light of day, so to speak. And a lot of people became very critical of that and rightly so. I was one of, one of you guys, right? But here, when we are on the verge of the new era in World of Warcraft, when Shadowlands is almost upon us, and consciously trying to look for positives, trying to look for a path forward for myself, and offering it to you as my friends, and, you know, similarly playing, hopefully, casuals, I can tell you that very recently, when I started testing the leveling speed for my Hunter that I reported on in the previous video, I have rediscovered, wanted to say discovered, rediscovered, Draenor as an expansion, basically, where I found it really, really enjoyable to level. And now I would like to offer you in this video basically my list of reasons why I consciously think I would recommend that you reconsider if, for example, you waved off Draenor before and said I will never go back to WOD. I said that myself. I said I will never set foot onto that godforsaken land, okay? And I was so fatigued, I was so annoyed, and all of that. Today I'd like to offer you a counterpoint, and why both you and I probably will actually enjoy ourselves quite a lot in Draenor. Reason number one, from an altoholic to potentially an altoholic person with many alts in World of Warcraft, I can say that in my opinion, Warlords of Draenor leveling experience is not too recent for me. It might be the same thing for you. What I mean by that is that whatever I did, whatever leveling I did for the last, for the past like 15 alts that I have, had nothing to do with Warlords of Draenor. Either I was leveling from 110 to 120, the last 10 levels, right? And that had nothing to do with Warlords of Draenor. Or even if it was one of those allied races that I was leveling from level 20, then I certainly was avoiding Warlords of Draenor like a plague, simply because of those old bad memories. But now I would say, honestly, sitting here right now, I would say that we have not been in Warlords of Draenor lands for quite some time. And to me, it was refreshing. It was very refreshing to just take a stab at it and go there instead of Pandaria or instead of staying in Pandaria. And I went into Warlords of Draenor and I chose that leveling path for my hunter, for my recent Mechagonian hunter. And basically, I was really positively surprised. I would almost dare say reinvigorated. It was fun. It was fun to level in Warlords of Draenor Lands. And I will tell you a few other points why, it, why, why I think it's also going to be fairly efficient for both of us if we consider taking other alts through Warlords of Draenor. Now, point number two here is that I believe that Warlords of Draenor expansion actually has a pretty good storyline. It has fantastic storytelling, it has a lot of voiceovers, it has a lot of um, scenic kind of uh, cinematics uh, that are embedded in the game. A lot more, I dare say, than certainly BFA offered us. Possibly on par with Legion, but I will not compare one-to-one -one because the feel of expansions is quite different, obviously. 
Uh, now, by the way, if I'm mentioning Legion and you're wondering, Gyro, mate, why not Legion? Legion is such an easy choice if you could choose to level in Legion. First of all, my friend, I will. I will choose Legion for some of my alts, for sure. And we will, by the way, review Legion, similarly to what I'm offering you here as far as Volos of Reno is concerned, similarly to what I'm planning to do about Pandaria. But, spoiler alert, these three expansions right now, Legion, Pandaria, and Worlds of Reno are actually on my short list of those time-walking campaigns that I would consider. All three have beneficial elements that need that deserve separate videos, deserve separate review for you. So yes, sure, um, I would consider that absolutely. Now, why I think that uh, Worlds of Draino offers particularly well storyline we already spoke about, but what else do I think? I think that just now fresh experience right when i was leveling my hunter and i was leveling my hunter mind you this background footage is before pre-patch hit so of course i was leveling in the still in non-squished level world still experience boosts were working and all that kind of stuff but even with all that cast aside i was able to level my whole gap that was in draenor i was leveling in one zone of Draenor in Shadow Moon Valley. Shadow Moon Valley is one of the most gorgeous places one could ever be in. Of course, after Squish, after Time Walking Campaigns are in full swing, we would have to do what it was always designed to be. There would be level ranges probably when you out level a zone such as Shadow Moon Valley. You start there, but then you have to go to Gogron, then you have to go to Talador, then you have to go further and further. That's fine. But it has to be mentioned that one of the good reasons to revisit Draenor is how gorgeous it is. How gorgeous it is. Absolutely gorgeous. At least from Alliance perspective. I'm sure Horde also has its own rough beauty of the snowy landscapes of Frostfire Ridge. And I do enjoy it too because I have outs on both sides. But quite frankly, Shadow Moon Valley, after not being there for years, it was mind-boggling how much I enjoyed it atmospherically. If you are anything like me and if you're not all about just efficiency, rush, 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 if you are a little bit about fun, take a step back, have a nice evening at your computer and play a game, because that's what I encourage you to be. I think that that's more healthy for us and this expansion is not going to go away anyway for the next two years. We have time. We have time. Take your time leveling is one of the encouragements that I want to make in this video. Then you will totally enjoy it. You will totally enjoy it. Now, another thing, another point to point out here is that in um, Draenor, that was the first place, in Worlds of Draenor was the first place where they introduced Mission Table. Let's not talk about how annoying it became. A lot of things became annoying in Worlds of Draenor for one good reason. Everything became repetitive. Everything was stretched too long. They have basically overcooked the meal. They let us eat the same meal for too long and then it becomes stale, then it becomes not pleasant, okay? If you cast that aside, if you just take it for what it was designed to be, leveling experience, a few features that were not supposed to drag for too long, ideally, if you forget about end game, forget about end game, then you will know that the process itself, the quest lines, all of that kind of stuff is actually flowing quite nicely and is very well set up. So the feature, extra feature is the fact that um, because of the missions table that I just mentioned, because of the missions table, you encounter little quests, short quest lines, or sometimes it's literally literally just talk to a dude, get a bunch of experience, and you get that guy as a follower for your garrison. Just because of how many of those followers are scattered across the land, and if you're using Wowhead, if you're using any add-ons such as Handy Notes, Drain or Treasures, one of the add-ons that I do use, you will find it very very easy to discover these extra sources of very quick experience. So even with all the experience boosts gone, Draeno is just so densely populated with those with those extra sources of experience and fun and little side steps that offer you a little bit of fun as well as experience that I think this is a prominent prominent point to make of why you would choose Draeno over something else to level in. Now, Mission Table used to also be wonderful in terms of it provided missions that gave you as a player experience, as a, as a reward of the mission successfully completed by your followers. Now, I have checked on PTR. Um, obviously, I'm recording this before the pre-patch hits, so I cannot test it on live, but pre-patch, 
um, uh, PTR kind of shows me that they have removed, I think they have removed the missions that used to give player bonus experience, but there were also bits and pieces that were giving you extra experience just because you're in Drino. Mission table used to yield experience from missions from some of them. Then you could also buy a special flask that used to give you 20%, 20% experience boost while you are anywhere in Drano. It would have been mega huge and I took advantage of it a little bit in the level gap when I was in Drano on my Hunter, when I was testing leveling Hunter, but now we cannot. We cannot anymore because I've double checked they definitely removed that flask from your quartermaster in garrison. You cannot buy it anymore, so that is not an advantage anymore. But I'm just mentioning it simply because of the fond memories of what still makes, I think, and used to make Draenor a wonderful, wonderful place to level. Now, speaking of mission tables and followers, you can, so Draenor is one of those few expansions, like Legion and Draenor, I think only two of them, that allow you to have a bodyguard with you in the open world out there. One of the followers, or some of the followers have bodyguard trait. That trait means that they, if you ask them to go on a patrol with you, they will follow you in the open world. You can talk to, I think, any follower inside of Garrison and you can ask them to go on a patrol with you within the perimeter of the Garrison, but the bodyguards would follow you outside. Somehow, I don't understand how, but in this little extra footage that I recorded kind of for this, to accompany this video, I tried to find my bodyguard, Tomok, uh, the big dude who I always loved in Wallows of Draenor in the good old days, and now simply to make a point that he can be a good bodyguard, I can see him in the list of followers on the mission table and he still has that bodyguard trait, so it certainly is not removed. But I couldn't physically find him in my garrison anyway. I simply forgot, maybe he's somewhere assigned some job there because you used to assign them jobs, I think, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. But I just couldn't find him to say, mate, come with me on a patrol, I want to show my friends how you're my bodyguard in the open world. I simply failed to do that, but I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that mechanic still exists, and for some people who play squishy classes, I don't know, say holy priests. Some people can insist still on leveling as holy priests. I don't know. I don't know why would you do that to yourself, but okay, fair enough. So a bodyguard used to help quite a lot. They used to help quite a lot, and this is a good benefit to non-pet classes to make your leveling experience, especially if you are not particularly, you know, experienced, easier. It just makes it easier. What else should I say? Look, you can, if you don't, again, if you don't treat the leveling experience, this time walking campaign, as just a mad rush to the end, to the end game, but if you try and enjoy it, I mean, you are leveling, but you want to enjoy the process as well, then the mission table additionally provides you with free gear. It used to be one of those annoyances that became annoyances because, oh, well, you didn't need to leave Garrison to even get gear, you could just get stuff from Mission Table. Well, yes, and also the item level of that gear was limited, so it's not like it could satisfy you endlessly, it could not, so let's just not go too far. But I think I'll mention it here that it had a unique, Wallets of Draenor offered you a unique mechanic that allowed you to also gear while you're leveling. It would also allow you to obtain gear from multitude of sources, from salvaging the crates, for example, you could get some gear for transmog or for the for actually equipping yourself with, and also you could get some gear from the missions, from the mission table. That's not bad. Well, it wasn't bad as far as I can remember it. So that's pretty good. So guys, not to make it too long, I think I made my point. I'm, I enjoyed Wallets of Draenor when I was running my test hunter, leveling my test hunter to check how long it takes me before the pre-patch hits. I think that if I start leveling another allied race or something, possibly I have maybe, I'm thinking maybe leveling a cool Tyrion Druid. I don't have a cool Tyrion Druid and they have amazing forms. Even if Druid is not among my main classes cho class choices for Shadowlands, I think I might kill some time and pre-patch and level a cool Tyrion Druid, possibly. So if I do that, I probably will choose Wallows of Draenor as my time walking campaign and expansion, leveling expansion of choice. Let me know how you feel. Tell me if you have any fond memories of Wallows of Draenor. Have you played it at the, at the time? Were you one of those people like me, frustrated with the long lull at the end of it? And can you differentiate the quality content of leveling that a lot of people actually praised, even at the time? 
versus the lengthy end game that we really don't care about. That's when we go into Shadowlands. We don't care. But Warlords of Draenor, I think, is a quality expansion that can still offer a lot of fun for all of us to level. And if you waited until the very end to kind of before I say goodbye, and if you were if you're my supporter who actually bothered to listen to me, here is a bonus point for you. I'll say it's a bonus point, but I actually just forgot to mention it earlier, but okay. So one extra thing that is wonderful about Warlords of Draenor is the fact of how littered with treasure chests it is. It is littered with treasure chests. I would dare say no other expansion comes close to how many treasures were scattered around the land. Just take Shadow Moon Valley as an one zone for it, but they all are. To some, to a greater and lesser extent, I think specifically Shadow Moon Valley and Talador are two zones that are just famous to be littered with hidden treasures. And those hidden treasures, at least before the pre-patch, at least in the non-squished world, but I can imagine they will still keep it the same, that is my bet right now at the moment of recording of this video, picking up any of those treasures gave you experience equal to completing a quest. So it's kind of like, well, quests have objectives, right? Kill quests, whatever they are quests. But imagine if you know where to go and they are done handy notes, Draenor treasures that I mentioned already, but specifically in relation to actual treasures, collecting actual treasures, you have to understand that you can use collection of treasures, purely collection of treasures, as a major source of experience. In the squished world, in the previous world that we currently are in, in the pre-expansion world, I mean, Unless they change something drastically, and okay, well, then both, then I will just say, oh, I was assuming wrong, right? But I expect that this probably is unlikely to change. They probably will keep this as an extra boost, but it's not like it's an XP boost. It is just extra objectives that the land offers to you. But this is another very, very major reason, saved, and self saved the best for last, didn't I? Uh, for you to consider Draenor over other expansions. I think picking up two, three, four, five, six of those chests on the way, if you know where to go, and you follow the add-on and it will show you on the map, it will give you an equivalent of completing five, six, whatever, whatever quests. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already, and like the video because don't forget, YouTube wants to know if you enjoy videos before it starts recommending it to other people. I really appreciate your support. I'll be speaking with you again very, very soon, twice a week. We keep going into Shadowlands very strong as a community. See you later, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.